Good morning, judges and distinguished guests. Staking our claim on America's future. The committee was silent as a lone congressman slowly stood and walked forward to take the well. As he began to speak, committee members listened intensely, well aware that the issue on which he spoke was one close to his heart. No doubt many remember the days when back in the Virginia legislature, he had fought successfully on behalf of his principles. But this, this was no state legislature. This was the United States House of Representatives. And what the congressman proposed was no small state bill. No, indeed. What the lone congressman now speaking proposed was a constitutional amendment. Naturally, committee members gave the strong, almost radical proposal heavy consideration. And thus, on the 8th of June, 1789, Congressman James Madison first proposed what would become the very first amendment to our United States Constitution. Perhaps those listening that day gave the matter even more thought, realizing that the man who now stood before them was seeking to amend the very Constitution he himself had helped to write. No matter, though, for after changing the wording only slightly, the committee approved Madison's proposal for debate on the House floor. As the chair recognized the gentleman from Virginia, the House was hushed. He strode forward and took the well and began to speak. He told House members of the need he saw a need for a constitutional amendment prohibiting the federal government from either establishing a national religion or keeping any citizen from practicing his own religion. And then the debate began. Congressmen spent days cutting, clarifying, and fine-tuning every word of the amendment until finally, on August 15th, the House approved a revised version of Madison's original proposal, but to the degree of slowness with which the process had progressed thus far, so was it all suddenly reversed when just five days later, Congressman Fisher Ames stood with the motion that could completely change the very wording the House had argued over these two long months. The previous question was moved. The vote was taken. The motion passed. The gavel struck. And Madison's proposal was on its way to the United States Senate. Senators were no more able to come to any quick agreement than had been House members. A majority of senators felt that in addition to freedoms of religion, other freedoms should be added, such as freedom of speech and of the press. Finally, with no quick end in sight, a conference committee was called, with Madison himself presiding. After fierce debate, committee members arrived at a compromise. The Senate concurred the very same day. And from this session came those immortal words that you and I now know as our First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition their government for a redress of grievances. Amendment 1 contains five basic freedoms which are so precious to us as Americans. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, and freedom of petition. Perhaps one of the most cherished of these is our freedom of speech. Our founding fathers knew that the ability to speak out without fear of reprisal is necessary to preserve freedom. After all, one of the first acts of oppressive governments is to ban free speech and to silence individuals who would dare speak out against their government. But in America, we are free. Our First Amendment rights protect our way of life. James Madison presented us with the constitutional paradox in that our Constitution protects our freedom of speech. 
that in order to protect our Constitution, we must exercise this very freedom. In America, we have been blessed with both freedom itself and with the means to protect this freedom. But not all people enjoy the right to voice their opinions. Consider the story of a group of students, much like some here today. They had gathered in their nation's capital in front of a memorial honoring those who had been lost in war. Some of the students walked up to the memorial and found the names of loved ones whom they lost. Others stood back quietly and watched. As they stood there that night, they began to sing a hymn in honor of their nation's heroes but they were not greeted with the reverence that you or I might expect, but instead with guards running towards them, ordering them to stop singing. As one guard ran down the line, he came to a student who did not stop immediately. Instead, she finished her song while the guard stood before her holding his flashlight inches from her face, shouting at her, threatening her with arrest. That night, those students were denied, denied the right to voice their opinions or even to sing a hymn in their nation's capital. But what makes this story important to you and me is that this didn't happen in some far-off nation. It happened in our nation's capital, in Washington, D.C., I, I know what you're thinking, and I wouldn't have believed it either. But you see, I was that student. I was told that I could be arrested for voicing my opinions or even singing a hymn in my nation's capital. And as I stood there that night before the Vietnam Memorial, I realized how important it is for me to be involved in my government. How important is it to you? James Madison presented us with the constitutional paradox in that freedom of speech is protected in our Constitution and it is best protected by its own exercise. He also left us with the constitutional principle that the responsibility to protect the freedoms of all Americans rests on every American. Hence, our Constitution begins with the words, we the people. The freedoms that we hold dear belong to all of us, and the responsibility to protect these rests on each of us. The First Amendment belongs to the American people. But ladies and gentlemen, it also belongs to each and every one of us individually. You and I are the proud owners of a constitution that proclaims liberty to all of its people. Our constitution begins with the words, we the people. Not we the politicians. Not we the influential. Not we the rich or we the powerful. No, we the people. And today we are the people to whom this Constitution belongs. Now is the time for us to stake our claim on America's future. The preservation of our Constitution rests in the exercise of its freedoms. The preservation of our First Amendment rests in our exercising the right to speak out for freedom. The fate of America is on the shoulders of patriots who will love her, serve her, and cherish her freedoms. And ladies and gentlemen, the fate of the future is in the hands of those of us who will boldly go out and stake our claim on America's future. Thank you. <laughs>